My name is Dimitri Williams. I'm the CEO of Ninja Metrics. I was a longtime game player, and in this particular industry, I also do play a bit of poker. Um, so they always say, follow your interests. Mom says, do what you like, and you aren't working very hard. So that's how I got started. I've been CEO of Ninja Metrics for about three years now, and prior to that, uh, I am and have been a university professor at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, where I've been researching games, gamers, and data for about 15 years. So it's always been of interest of mine. Ninja Metrics is a data analytics company, and we take data from game providers, hosts, developers to give them actionable intelligence about their users and customers. In particular, what we do is we look at how the players are connected to each other, and we have a special series of algorithms which measure how much players influence and impact each other. This lets us tell the developers who their most important and influential players are so that they can treat them differently and reach others through them. And we find that this interaction between players, which is something we've labeled social value, accounts for somewhere between 10 and 40 percent of all player decisions and behaviors, whether it's logging into the site or actually spending money. So it's quite a large chunk of human behavior that we're unlocking for the first time. So our service is a SaaS system, SaaS standing for Software as a Service, and it is a piece of software that lives up in the cloud. And so our client companies connect to our system, they feed us data, and those data are then delivered in a series of dashboards. Our system is called Katana, like the ninja sword, and it lets our clients log in and see all of the things they want to know about their users, including predictions of what the users are going to do next, who the most socially valuable and influential users are, as well as a series of tools to help understand, monetize, and interact and impact with them and to see the results of their actions. So we started off in gaming as in video gaming at the beginning where we had done a lot of background research um, as part of our older research team. Um, and now as we look to expand, we're expanding what we mean by gaming to cover things like what we see out here in the trade show, Florida Ice. Um, we expand into really any industry where people interact and where they're social and we find that gaming, sports, betting, poker, etc. are really good candidates for this because the players actually do seem to drive each other's behavior quite a bit. Um, nobody can measure the influence of people on each other. There are people out there who, t who measure what people talk about and deliver a score based on, say, how much someone tweets. But our be ours is actually much different because it's based on behavior. So our scores and our metrics are delivered in, say, number of sessions or actual uh, money spent. Um, and therefore, um, it's delivering a qualitatively different kind of metric than's ever been seen before. So our unique selling point is really the ability to truly measure the impact of people on each other for the first time in a metric that makes sense to accountants um, rather than just sounds good. So my sector is analytics, and the first trend, of course, is big. Everybody likes to say big and big data. Um, I don't know how exciting that is as a trend. It's just saying more of what we did before. Um, I think the more interesting trends are understanding what's going on in the relationships between players. As people's social behavior becomes much more connected with their other behaviors, as in when you're logging into things through Facebook and Google+, this opens up really a wealth of data and opportunities for everyone to understand why people what they do what they're doing, how they interact with each other, and what that all means. It's very, very early um, in the sector for that, but we have some interesting off off offerings, obviously. Um, but we expect others will finally catch on because it's, it's too much to ignore and it's too interesting. I think we'll see people's data becoming more and more available. People are giving away more and more of it to access products and services. And many companies use social logins as a way of making the registration path easier, as in rather than fill out this whole form, click this button. That's the first phase in this. But later on, I think what will happen is this will come closer to real world point of sale transactions as people use loyalty cards and their cell phones to log in and connect to digital wallets. So I really think what you're seeing here is kind of a closing of the loop between people's behaviors in the cloud and what they do with their banking and what they actually do physically walking around the world. There's just more and more and more. And as things come together, it actually makes things qualitatively, qualitatively more interesting and deeper than it had been. For number one, education, getting people to understand what they can do with the data they already have. Um, and number two, getting them to care about it, because it's very easy to say we're a data-driven developer or a data-driven company, and then you get in there and you find out that what that means is they've used Google Analytics to find out how many people are visiting their site or using their system, and that's really not what we mean by data-driven decision-making at all. Um, so sometimes it's resistance from their existing shareholders or their technology people in understanding and saying, well, no, we could buy that or no, we could build that on their own, and no, they really can't. 
So um, it's early days and it's mostly education. What we could do in my sector better um, is to make this easier for developers who don't have PhDs. So I'm a data scientist. No one should have to understand what I understand. No one should need to see charts and graphs. So there's a lot of translation work that can be done to take some extremely difficult concepts and algorithms and put them into something that you can look at in an easy to use dashboard, whether that means color coding it or putting in the simple graphs to make it actionable in the way that people are currently doing their business. So when we build something and we find really cool answers, that's very different than making it easy to understand and use. You'll see that get much better over time, and we work very hard at it. Highlight of my career, I'd be getting tenure, that was nice. Um, and then being the person in charge of the company because nobody else wanted to do it, that was nice. And then we got funded, and then suddenly it was very much for real. Um, this is one of those be careful what you ask for moments. It's been a really fun, interesting ride. I love what I do. Get a good social science degree, but also know how to do the technical side. Usually what we run into when we look at data scientists or analysts is that they really only have a left brain or a right brain, but not both. We find people who are technically amazingly skilled. They can run SQL queries and do big data stuff all day, but they haven't a clue about what questions to ask or how to interpret the answers. On the other side, we find people who are really, really intelligent, very insightful, understand the business, understand the social psychology of the players, but couldn't do the technical side to save their lives. Rather than hiring two people, it'd be nice if you could just hire one person. So whichever brain you tilt towards, work a bit on the other side and you'll be hired and you'll be paid a lot of money. Social games have always been very interesting, and especially in the states where they're becoming more legal all the time. This opens up a lot of things which hadn't been gambling oriented to suddenly be. Um, watching which ones are going to be the ones that take off as the switch is flipped would be particularly interesting. Um, I like games from a little company called Wedge Buster. They have a game called Slot Buster, which is a lot of fun. Um, Seeing who differentiates over this next couple of years will be very, very telling. Um, and personally, I like poker. I tell my wife that I never gamble, but I play poker a lot. I don't know if that counts as gambling. Don't sue me, but I don't like games of chance myself because I, as being a data scientist, like to be a little more in control of things. Um, I don't play the lottery ever, sorry. Um, but I'll play poker all day long. Um, I've won lots of uh, small, medium-sized poker tournaments, you know, a few thousand dollars, that sort of thing. Never anything massive. Um, I try to keep low stakes because I have a pretty active day job.